Kia ora. Thank you for that, Ursula. Um, so kia ora koutou, ko rangapoto te maunga, ko waismata te awa, no Tamaki Makoto aho, ko Kennedy toku Fano, ko Michelle toku ingoa. So kia ora and welcome everyone. I am Michelle Kennedy. I am the founder of, of Auckland Climate Festival. Um, we kicked off the festival last year for the very first time. Uh, we brought together um, a really amazing group of people. So I'm, I'm really stoked to, um, to be kickstarting this again this year with a bunch of people that were around last year and also, um, also some new people. So we'll just go through the agenda um, before, um, before we jump into it. So I will start off by going through um, an introduction to the festival, so a bit of an overview. And then I'll hand back over to Ursula, who will be going through the theme for this year, Ancestor Me. And then I'll take over again and go through the registration details um, to become an event host. And then we will end with some Q&A. So the session today is quite short. It is 45 minutes. Um, so um, yeah, again, thank you for joining us. We're really pleased to have you here. So as I mentioned before, last year I launched Auckland Climate Festival. It brought together um, over 75 events focused on, on climate action. Um, I set the festival up originally um, wanting to um, have an opportunity for us all to come together in, a, in the year um, to raise uh, awareness and the overall ambition for climate action in, um, in, in Tamaki Makoto and across Aotearoa. Um, so yeah, what, um, what kind of, what got me there was, um, you know, throughout my, throughout my twenties, um, learning more about climate change, um, I was feeling relatively um, despondent, um, you know, pretty overwhelmed by what I was learning. Um, but for me, it was really important to move through that and move to a place of hope. Um, and so that was another reason why uh, the festival um, was something that I thought would, would, was a really important um, uh, thing for Auckland was to actually instill a sense of hope for Aucklanders as well um, by being able to engage in climate action and also see and hear about um, everything going on too. Um, so yeah, so we're really excited to be um, doing it again this year. We are expecting to have over a hundred events on the um, on the program, um, and it will be running across the whole month of October, so from the first until the thirty first of October, and um, it will be curated uh, by and for Aucklanders. So by you. Uh, we will be uh, launching a, a host, uh, sorry, we'll be hosting a launch and close event at the beginning and end. Um, and then the rest of the program will be pulling together um, under the festival umbrella. Um, and we're, we're really excited about getting a really wide um, range of events on the program this year. So um, the, I've, I wanted to introduce you to the team. Um, you obviously know me. Uh, we have Mike and Ursula, who's, who you've seen today so far. Do you want to just raise your hands, both of you, and um, just so people can see you? Yep. Um, and we are supported by um, a really amazing board, um, who you can see on the screen there, who are um, helping guide, um, guide the direction of the festival, um, give us wisdom and support. So we're really grateful to have them on board. Um, Mike, I'll get you to introduce yourself a little bit later, but I'll hand over um, to you, Ursula, to introduce yourself and go through the theme. Cool. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Amazing. So, ko Ursula toko ingwa. Kia ora. It's lovely to be here. I am, I joined the ACF team around just at the beginning of this year. And it's been an amazing experience to um, apply my passions and thinking about uh, climate change in our environment and playing into developing a new narrative and an incredible ecosystem of uh, 
people and initiatives and uh, actions in Auckland. So uh, we, in terms of developing this theme, it was a really collaborative process. So we came together with experts and storytellers and we, we really went through a process of iteration with the theme development. And it came from really a place that Michelle has already spoken about, but um, that the current climate story is really doom and gloom and overwhelming. And the media and the news makes us feel a little bit like we can't do anything about it. Um, however, that's not, we don't believe that to be true. So uh, we see this, we've recognized a need to change that story and to take, we really need that to be able to take the action that we, um, that we need for our environment and for our places and our people as well. So the theme is designed to bring us together. Also the theme for a festival is to bring together the event hosts and really give um, some direction and some inspiration for our event hosts to create meaningful events that truly spark action. So we're, we're, thank you to everyone that has contributed to the development of the theme. It's been a real amazing journey. And uh, where we have landed is here. So take a moment to reflect on this ancestor me. I'm a good ancestor believing in our future. I invite you to be curious about what it might spark within you and your thinking, how it might make you feel. We invite you to reflect as yourself as an ancestor. It, this theme is encouraging us to think really deeply about our place in the world. Uh, alive now, our actions will affect those, our mokopuna, our grandchildren to come. And can we imagine our grandkids looking back at us and thinking that we were good ancestors? And we do recognize that this can be kind of an uncomfortable question. Um, a little bit confronting and it's also very personal we're asking you to reflect on it yourself to really um feel it and it does take us out of this short-term thinking which we quite naturally uh, get stuck in and places us in a greater story so from here we are going to move into we're going to move into the menti meter so we invite you to go to menti.com after those little moments of reflection and, and this is the code 9055-7228, or you can scan that QR code if you're that technically able. <laughs> and we're gonna bring up the Mentimeter. And I just would love to invite you to share um, what does this ancestor me theme, uh, what does it mean to you? Great, look at that, look at us, we're working now, okay. Idea of old men planting trees. Love, connection through time, amazing. Thinking long-term like hundreds of years into the future. Anchor me, love that. Hope, future-proofing, being accountable, taking honorable actions, however unpopular. Being a good guardian, protecting the environment. Think like an ancestor, act like you want to be viewed by those who follow you. Fano. Being born in a time when our actions, I would love to see that one, what's that one? When our actions collectively and individually reverberate in a time when we will be held accountable for those actions. These are awesome. So this theme is developed to be created and come to life um, with this community that's here and those which that will be watching and being involved in the festival over the year. Because it is such a personal reflection, it, it is really created by us collectively um, because everyone's idea of an ancestor um, or a good ancestor is different and that's welcome and that's a part of it so thanks so much for sharing those and I will attempt to get back to the other slides um, very smoothly which is gonna be there great thank you so much so this brings us um, back to this idea of believing in our future together. So we really think that the, without this positive 
intention for our future, how are we really going to have the strength to change our actions now? And people have um, already been sharing on LinkedIn um, and social media around what this thing means to them. Um, and Mike, we wanted um, just to invite you to potentially share on your I've got a little screen here um, on what you thought the theme meant to you. Thanks for that. Um, so I'm not sure people can read um, what's on there, but when we were coming up with the theme, what I really loved about it was it took me out of myself and kind of sprung me forward in time um, to reflect on kind of what my life may or may not have looked like um, through climate action and, you know, what is the climate legacy that I want to see Auckland um, having and how that fits in with the rest of Aotearoa. Um, and so obviously for me in this very moment, it's being part of, of the festival and, and supporting that. Um, but ultimately it also reminds me that there are a lot of um, individual actions that I can take myself on an everyday basis um, uh, to help us move toward more regenerative action um, and thinking. Thanks for that, Ursula. Great, thank you. And um, Mike's on the ACF team helping us with um, governance and funding and all those fun things. So um, we now that we've had a think about the theme, uh, we invite you to really get creative. So this is now over to our event hosts to um, bring this to life. And we really want everyone that attends one of your events to go away feeling and understanding that they are an ancestor and all of those things that you just shared in the Mentimeter. Um, so we give you permission to get creative and we give you permission to ask um, these important questions. So yeah, take the theme and run with it. It's yours to share. And um, we're really excited about what's possible this year. So we're gonna go back to the Mentimeter um, and explore the a next question, which is about, taking some time to reflect on what an impactful event looks like. So we can have these great intentions um, and what has been an event that you've been to in the past that um, has really left an impact on you and been meaningful and what were the elements that made that event so meaningful? So again, I'm gonna do a renew share. Amazing. Enjoyable. Coffee, important. Legacy. Sunlight. Casual format. Insight. Connection, participation. Color. All ages. Dance that does make events meaningful and impactful. Music, enlightening, memorable, optimistic, love, papa, knowledge, thoughtful, generated action, meeting great people, very important, anything interactive, well-organized. Wow, yeah, nice, everyone community, creativity, hybrid, variety. So we invite you to think about these, um, what a, what a well-executed event uh, looks like. And because the more that we can create these engaging events, the more action we can incite in our communities and our um, audiences. And that's a part of our role as event hosts. So it really is this combination of thinking about these deep conversations with the theme and bringing in well-executed events um, and knowledge and to bring this festival to life with us. Is there anything that you wanna share, Michelle? I love how, um, how the main ones that are in the center are around um, connection and community. So those are the ones that I think people have voted on the most, um, which is really cool to see. Yeah, lots of amazing thoughts and ideas there.
Um, thank you for contributing to that. And we'll be sure to share all those things that um, in the coming days. So I'm going to pass it back to uh, Michelle now to take you through a little bit more about the practicalities of being an event host and what that looks like for you and how you can do it. Cool. Awesome. I'm sure that there's probably a lot going on in your minds at the moment <laughs> because we've just we've just gone through quite a lot in quite a short space of time. Um, but yeah, really what we're trying to um, what we're trying to say is that um, we want for you to feel empowered to do events um, and initiatives and activations that um, that make sense to you in light of what we've just talked about. Um, so that can be anything from um, like a bike tour of the of the city's greenest buildings or um, food on a plate um, style, um, like a plant based dish experience, for example, um, or a workshop series. There's the the ideas are endless, and we don't want to put a cap on that. So um, definitely, uh, you know, have a chat to your teams, uh, your colleagues, your Fano, and um, yeah, get get creative um, with what you want to do. And this year, we really want to encourage collaboration as much as possible too. So last year, we had um, a lot of collaboration going on, uh, which was amazing to see. So we had um, about one and one and a half <laughs> um, event partners per event. So a lot, a lot of them were held in collaboration, basically. Um, and we really want to increase that this year. Um, we can do so much more when we're doing it together. So let's bring together our our kind of collective uh, resources, our ambition, our energy, um, and yeah, and, and, and put on high impact events together. I think when we do that, we can really push the envelope of what is possible. So consider how your events or initiatives um, might teach uh, people, um, and how they might inspire people and how they might actually help engage um, uh, enable people to actually act for climate uh, during the month. Um, so yeah, so there are so many different um, different things that can be done. Some might fall into just one of these categories, some might go across. Um, so yeah, have a think. As I said, create an experience. Um, so that's what we, I think, in the going back to the Mentimeter that we just looked at, that we just contributed to before, um, the biggest one was connection, and often that happens when you're, um, that, that's what helps create that experience um, and leave an impression for people. Again, that's the, that's the way that we're going to shift behaviours around climate change, is actually leaving a really positive impression for people. So that it's not just climate action during October, you know, so that it can, continues beyond then. So on a very practical note, um, we, our registrations, for submitting events, they're open now. Um, they are open until mid-July. And what we're asking for between now and then is high-level um, information on what you're, what you're wanting to put on. We don't need to have all of the details finalized by mid-July. Um, it's really just so that we can get an idea of how the program is shaping up and also to start promoting those events uh, on our website. Um, so we're essentially asking for a hero shot um, and uh, some text. And then there are a couple of other questions as well. Um, it's all on the registration form on our, on our website. Um, and then the next key date is um, mid August. So that's when we want to have more details confirmed that's six weeks out from the festival start. Um, we just, um, last year, there were registrations came in quite late um, and it was quite, it was a bit challenging for us to um, to manage that so close to the festival and, and create meaningful um, communications around it. So the earlier that you can get in um, your events to us, even if it's just a high level thing, um, that would be um, greatly appreciated um, from our side. Uh, and it means that you get more time to promote your event as well. Um, we can, yeah, the more that we um, are kept in the loop with what you're planning, um, the better. So yeah, on that note, I guess just want to say that we are here to help. Um, we, um, you're welcome to book a call with us. 
um, of course, keep attending more of these hui, which we'll be putting on. And we are uh, in the process of building a forum on our website, um, which we're intending to be a hub for people to share ideas, um, share venues, request, you know, request venues, share resources, expertise, um, put their hand up to volunteer and all that sort of thing. So please um, make the most of that. We'll let you know um, when it is live, um, but it's there and it's hopefully going to help with um, we'll, we'll be there soon uh, to help with collaboration but in the meantime feel free to of course reach out to us and we can help make connections too and um, we're also uh, building our, our website to um, to include well there's already FAQ up there so I uh, encourage you to take a look at those if you haven't yet uh, and we will have a resource hub as well so over time we'll be adding um, resources to help you when you're thinking about uh, the design and the delivery aspects of your event um, and you know and we'll upload things like the media pack for example media and PR pack that you can use um, in your for your events and to promote the festival too so keep an eye out on our website it'll be the hub for all of that stuff shall we jump into some Q&A have there been questions um, yeah, or you can use the raise the hand um, feature to ask any questions or share anything that you want to share. That's a great question. <laughs> um, on our website, um, there is a uh, become an event host page um, and on there you'll see the icon. So that's a, it looks exactly the same as what I just showed you. Just click on the icon and um, you'll put, be put through to um, Calendly and it just shows, it shows on there our availability. So the funding side of things, that's a good question as well. Um, so if you are looking for funding, um, we, we ourselves aren't able to um, provide any funding beyond what we're doing for the festival in terms of um, the marketing comms, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you do let us know, we can pass you on to um, some contacts at Foundation North um, who have offered to, um, to speak to people that are looking for funding. Uh, we'll also be adding some resources on our website for funding sources as well um, as, we, as we hear about them. Yeah, so Brian, feel free to reach out. Um, preferred venues for events. Um, there are no there are no preferred venues for events um it's all it's it's, it's up to you and um and what mo makes most sense for what you're wanting to put on and um your audiences so we would love for the events to be spread out around the city last year of course we were um virtual and it was in the middle of lockdown but this year we really want to make um the most of the opportunity to you know meet each other in person um and um I think it'd be great if we can get them into communities, not just in the CBD, for example. Of course, there will be um, quite a few taking place in the city centre, but yeah, definitely um, go out into your communities if you can. Just one thing that I thought about with the venues question um, was that if anyone out there is a, a host of a venue that wants to be involved in the festival, then we're also open to um, pr promoting you or putting you forward as, as a um, event a venue opportunity for our hosts. So Rachel, you've asked, is the intention the events are all free to attend? Um, we are encouraging as many events um, as possible to be free to attend, um, but they, there is no requirement for them to be. So you can definitely charge uh, for your events, um, of course, you're likely um, will need to recoup costs as well. We, we, we totally understand that. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's up to you. Um, Sam, any tips on whether or how we could measure the effectiveness of events via the, the ACS Kripapa? Yes, so um, uh, yeah, so have a look on our website. Um, there is quite a lot up there in terms of our kopapa and um, the about section as well. Uh, talks a bit about the kind of, um, yeah, an overview to, to the festival and what we're trying to achieve. Um, but we will, um, are you talking, Sam, 
are you talking about having like a a matrix or something like that what's what was the um what sorts of measures were you thinking about i'm just 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 throwing my question back at me yeah that's fair um <laughs> it, it was a hard one um i was just thinking that it's i mean it's 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 easier to host an event than to host an effective event right um and maybe some of the questions that we answered on mentimeter are kind of good guidance for how to approach an event that would actually have some kind of consequences or some kind of impact that we could point to um but i just wondered if yeah if you guys had thought about that as a team and maybe had some guidance or some you know a couple of key criteria that, that yeah to see coming out of the events yeah sorry yes yeah so we will um that will be that sort of guidance will be going up on our website under our resources section as well so it's not up there yet but we will um we will be putting that sort of guidance together over the next um little while so yeah um that was a good question yeah yeah i also feel think about those that host really effective events often in the art space and um other spaces as well it's how can we um work closely with people that pull off really good events and translate them into the climate action um intention it's definitely in the in a part of what we're discovering and working to develop for the resources for for everyone so ron has asked um how people hi ron um how people from overseas or from afar can help us amplify local actions here in Auckland. And thank you for publishing that preview. Um, again, I kind of want to put it back on to you um, of how you think that you can support us in this. Think Ron, I'm trying we can to is fair play. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. Um, we can share um, some information with you as well um about uh you know as we're as we're going through um the process and um and have events coming on board we will be uh releasing i guess um doing media releases throughout the year so there'll be those sorts of things that you can um reshare um through um your website um and if you of course um, want to be involved in the festival you're more than welcome to be as well so um we're definitely keen to collaborate um, with with people that aren't based in in Auckland as well. Yeah. Well, I'll just jump in quickly to say thank you, thank you, thank you. This is uh, certainly one of the more inspiring hybrid events uh, with good friends in Auckland. I'm trying to push them to pay attention to this uh, and to do something. Of course, everyone's so busy and so uh para uh pandemic focused uh that said again this to me is one of the more inspiring hybrid events i've ever seen and so again thank you folks and i'll be publishing and updating and uh as long as we have twitter for the next couple of weeks i'll be retweeting some of your good work so that's what i have to offer amazing thank you so much ron really appreciate that do you think an event on a boat, although produces emissions, would be appropriate as it would potentially have a high impact? That is a good question. Yeah, so I think that is that that goes back to what you were asking about, Sam, isn't it? In terms of, um, I guess, uh, what our criteria around events are, so to speak. Um, I would consider. I would. I guess question, I, I think it's a good question to be asking yourself about emissions. Um, we do want to be encouraging um, events to be holding, you know, um, to be a certain standard where we're encouraging active modes of transport, um, waste reduction or waste minimization um, or zero waste events altogether. You know, we are wanting to um, think about them in that way. So um, if there's an alternative that encourages uh, more accessibility for people it might be it might be more appropriate for that do we i'm not that? sure if, oh, oh what's it sorry or I sell it. 
actually. But we can talk about that, um, Rachel, if you want to talk about that, we can talk about that separately as well. Yeah. Um, so metrics around um, what is ACS aiming for, i.e. number of events, distance, online, in person. Are there any overarching campaigns, messages, citywide actions you want to tie into this festival? Okay, so there's a few questions there. Um, so in terms of number of events, we'd like to have at least over 100, um, but many of those uh, organized in collaboration. Um, number of participants, we had suggested around 50,000. Um, online in-person events, uh, so we would like to have a combination of both virtual and in-person events. So if you can't do an in-person event, then of course, um, and, and you and you want to do a virtual one, then they are absolutely um, welcome to be part of the festival. Um, we have quite a lot of interest in the festival from people outside of Auckland, um, across um, the rest of Aotearoa and, you know, obviously abroad. Um, so uh, the more that we, you know, that we can have virtual, um, the more that they can get involved as well. There's obviously lots that's relevant to Auckland, that's relevant to people elsewhere. Um, and we will be doing some collaboration with um, uh, some of our friends down in Wanaka, for example, who, who also has a similar initiative going on at the same time so that we can um, make those um, virtual events uh, available for us in Auckland for what they're doing. So, um, yeah. Uh, we also encourage events to be hybrid where possible. Um, appreciate that, that can be quite challenging sometimes. So, Obviously, it just depends on the practicalities of it, but um, if we can have as much recorded or available to be live streamed, um, that would be fantastic. Um, are there any overarching campaigns or messages? So we will be using the theme to inform the our, our campaigns. So um, for this first part, obviously for event hosts, um, we've just got going with that. And then we will be launching a participant campaign uh, once we are uh, uh, closer towards the festival and throughout the festival. So um, that's still being worked through in the background in terms of how that will um, how that will come out, how it will land. Uh, and the, the close event, um, so we'll be doing kind of commentary throughout the festival. And then at the close event, we will be summarizing and highlighting some of the key actions that have come from the festival. Um, that will be an opportunity for all of the event hosts to uh, to come together and, and celebrate, um, reflect on what's happened over the last month. And um, that's where we'll also be announcing the dates for next year, which will be October. <laughs> um, okay. Um, hopefully that answers your questions, Sterling. Um, yeah, so in terms of who's part of the festival, so we do encourage um, a whole, range of um, different organizations to be part of the festival, um, acknowledging that everyone's kind of on a journey. Obviously we want event hosts to be committed to the change. So um, so yeah, we don't we don't encourage greenwashing obviously, um, but we do acknowledge that people are um, at different parts of the journey. Yeah. Will there be in the forum or elsewhere a way of seeing the events that are already created so we don't double up? Yeah, so I guess that's the intent of the of the forum is to um, to be able to share ideas and also as events are um, submitted to us, we will put them on the website. Um, once we've reviewed them, accepted them, um, and it's gone through that process, and we've got all the details that we need, we'll put them on the program on the website. So you'll be able to see as things are being done, um, as things are being submitted, uh, what's been you know the ones that have actually been finalised. Um, but that's a good question, Brian. There'll also be, yeah, sorry, there'll also be a calendar function um, as part of it as well. Um, so we'll try and figure out how we can, if we can get like draft events um, on that calendar too. Yeah, that's a good question. If you've got any any other questions, um, feel free to just fire them through to us and we'd be happy to, to talk through those with you. Um, I think we need to, yeah, I, I, one of the things I'm taking from the chat is um, we'll, as soon as possible, we'll get the um, criteria 
information up on our website as well and we'll let you know once that's up there just to clarify that because it feels like there's quite a few questions around that so yeah thank you for all of those questions and just to reiterate that uh, we are here at ACF to support you in uh, developing and collaborating and um, so please do reach out and book a call with us and or send us an email and or chat with you know, maybe you've seen um, some other colleagues on this call that you didn't know would be here, you know, uh, reach out to them and maybe have a little bit of a soundboarding um, event idea, um, brainstorm or get your team together and, and get creative. Um, yeah, so it is uh, over to us together um, and over to you now to bring this festival to life with us and yeah what there's a lot of potential so what are you going to create what are you going to um, put out there for our communities and thank you to everyone for coming along and um, your time today and we will be in touch again we're going to have um, multiple different hui's like this on different topics um, you know maybe further down the line we'll talk about the marketing talk about the ways that we can create make these events um, more regenerative and effective um, so thank you so much would you like to say anything michelle no yeah thank you so much for joining and um, we really appreciate it and looking forward to working with you over the coming months Take care, everyone. Thank you, Chair.